Oysters in Maryland are at approximately 1% of their historic abundance. Much of Chesapeake Bay's habitat, the entire ecosystem revolved around oysters. We have done to it what we've done to most of the world's natural resources that were there in abundance. We figured that it was inexhaustible and we could harvest it without any consequences. And when people talk about the value of the oysters as far as filtering the bay, that really is only part of the uh, equation. A lot of those organisms that associate with oysters are also filter feeders. So it's the filtration that the community provides that's really important, not just the filtration that the oysters provide. The restoration of oysters as a keystone species is one of the most important things we need to do to bring Chesapeake Bay back. So one of the challenges that we have in the oyster restoration business is finding suitable substrate. Oysters in general prefer oyster shell to set on. And then once the shell is down at the bottom, it remains viable. But oyster shell in Maryland is very, very sparse. We're now exploring a mine in the panhandle of Florida that's getting fossilized oyster shells from the late Pliocene period about three million years ago. We're digging them up, washing them, grading them, and having them shipped to Maryland for use in Harris Creek. We will be bringing up about 100,000 cubic yards of fossilized oyster shells from this quarry in Florida up to Maryland over the next eight to nine months. Um, this is the largest rail movement, certainly, of shells ever performed in the United States and probably the world. Upon those habitats, the University of Maryland and the Oyster Recovery Partnership will directly place millions upon millions of oysters. Um, we are making habitats out of thin air. However, it's extremely expensive. We were able to partner with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, NCSX, to defray the cost somewhat for moving these oyster shells. NIF approached CSX and asked them if they would be interested in helping the foundation achieve some of the results they're looking for in oyster restoration. CSX agreed to provide transportation of fossilized oyster shells from the state of Florida all the way to the Chesapeake Bay uh, in an in-kind contribution of somewhere around two and a half million dollars. Without the involvement of CSX, uh, this project would have taken years and years to complete. Uh, as it is, uh, they'll be bringing uh, almost 3,000 tons of shells uh, in the next year or so. So it, their contribution uh, is significant to oyster restoration in the Chesapeake Bay. In partnership with the state, we've built this large cultivation facility, the Horn Point Lab of the University of Maryland. We can use the science and actually produce large quantities of oysters to be used in the restoration effort as a process. We go out and we collect brood stock, we bring them back in here, we condition them to be ready to spawn, we spawn the oysters, we raise the larvae, we get the larvae to the point where they're ready to settle, and then we introduce them into our setting tanks. And then those oysters set. We've been able to successfully get our production up over a billion spat per year. Uh, the Oyster Recovery Partnership will come in and deploy those to various grow out sites around the bay. The purpose of having these restored reefs, both on natural bottom and on the substrate, is to create viable oyster reefs. And that's the, the key to anything, because what we know from the science and, and from everything we've learned is having these viable reefs pay off tremendously down the road as far as the ecologic benefits of what they provide to the bay and the bay's ecosystem. You might be used to dredging, which is where you take material out and put it onto a barge. Oyster reef restoration is actually reverse dredging. You bring a barge full of substrate material, and then you take a clamshell dredge, and it pulls it out, and it places in the water until we get a rough layer of 6 to 12 inches of material that covers the area that we want. The Harris Creek Restoration Project is the largest restoration project that I'm aware of, certainly on the East Coast, if not in the entire country. To date, we've done 188 acres, and this year, um, being 2014, we're planning on doing about 750 million oysters that we planted within that tributary, so four to five million oysters per acre. I know it's successful because we have demonstrated time and again that we can take an area that has almost no oysters there and we can turn it into a living, vibrant oyster community. The effort today, what we're seeing out here on the barge, is just half of what's going to be coming in to this facility every uh, six to eight days. To give you some perspective, uh, the shell that is being brought here would cover 80 football fields a foot deep in oyster shell. 
I thought it was a really exciting project where this is a great kind of public-private partnerships that, that really can do good things for our community here for the Chesapeake Bay, which is dear to all of us. Because of this partnership, we're able to make progress for the health of the bay, the waters of the bay, therefore for us, and more importantly, the future generation of Maryland, this bay upon which our lives depend.